Hi, I'm Hafsan. I work at Experts Vision and today I'm here to explain you the modeling of a ZigBee mesh network in MATLAB. This video is meant for the freshmen in this field. We will not be using any complex terminology. Focus will be to explain it to you in the simplest of terms. If you have any question, you can contact us. I will be sharing the contact details at the end of this video. Before we move on to the modeling of the system, there are a few basic concepts we need to go through. First, what is a ZigBee network? ZigBee is a kind of wireless communication system that everyday devices use to transmit messages. These everyday devices can be your home security systems, light control systems, meter reading systems, even the wireless mouse for personal computers also use this technology. Next, we have the types of ZigBee devices. In a ZigBee network, there are three kinds of devices. One is router, then is coordinator, and third one is end device. A coordinator is the central part of any network, which means that it has information about all the nodes of the entire network, and a router is a device which can route data. It can route your messages, a ZigBee end device is the simplest type of device. It is also called a reduced function device. Whereas a coordinator is called a full function device. An end device cannot route traffic data, whereas the router can. And the coordinator, in addition to routing data traffic, is also responsible for forming the network in the first place. Depending upon the types of connection between the three types of devices, we have three topologies of a ZigBee network. It can be star, cluster tree or mesh. For our project, we will be dealing with the mesh topology. Now, a ZigBee device can either be active, sleep or dead. If it is active, this means that it is consuming energy and the message is being transmitted through it or it is waiting to transmit a message. Second is sleep mode. If a device is in sleep mode, that means that it is consuming very very little amount of power. Small enough such that when it gets a message, it will wake up, transmit that message and then go back to sleep again. Third is the dead mode. If a device is dead, it means that it has either completely run out of battery power or its battery power is so low that it cannot transmit a message. Every device has a different threshold below which if its energy falls, it will be considered dead. Now we have two modes of a ZigBee network. In beacon enabled networks, all devices are initially in sleep mode. The coordinator wakes up from time to time, sends beacons to all routers in the network. The routers wake up, check if there is any incoming message. If not, then they go back to sleep. If there is, then they will go back to sleep after transmitting that message. As a result, we have a longer battery life. Then we have a non-beacon mode. In such a mode, the coordinator and the routers are always active and the end devices are always in sleep mode. The coordinator and routers do not sleep, they are constantly waiting for a message. So you can say that they are constantly on the lookout of a message. The end devices are on sleep mode though. Although non-beacon modes have uh, require a robust power supply, but if we check the overall power consumption, then, then it is lower in this case because most of the network devices can remain inactive over longer periods. Now, this is the basic layout of a mesh network that we will be considering. In red color, we have the coordinator. Around it, we have six routers in green and the yellow dots represent the end devices. Now let's see. If the uh, if I want a message to be transmitted from node number one to node number 14, then what will happen? First, I need to see what are the neighboring nodes of each node. Now what is a neighboring node? A neighboring node is a node which falls within the 
radio range of another node okay for example if i am considering node number 6 i want to check which are its neighbors i will check what is the radio range of node 6 suppose it is 200 meters then all the nodes which which are whose distance is 200 meters or lesser to node 6 will be its neighbors in code i have defined this here here i have defined my radio range to be 200 meters now if we consider such a case then this will be the network in red color we have shown all the possible connections between all the nodes okay so you can see that for node number 11 it is directly connected to only three routers 5 4 and 3 whereas node number 9 it is connected to a lot more devices now let's check if we want to see uh, if we want to transmit message from node 1 to node 14 which path will it take it, there are number of possibilities it can go 1 6 14 1 5 13 14 1 5 13 14 1 5 13 or anything else which path is the one that it will actually opt for the answer to that is that it will go for the shortest path which in this case is obviously 1614 now let's run the program to check for ourselves now let's see what is actually happening before i explain you these figures let's see some of the basic parameters that we have set here i have said that the coordinator must be powered by a constant voltage supply the routers are and the end devices are powered by batteries of 3.292 volts each Next I specify that I want to transmit my message from node number 1 to node number 14 the initial and the destination node I can always change these values in code Furthermore I specify that if the level of energy level of any node becomes lesser than this threshold of 1.8 then that node will become dead and it will not be able to transmit anymore 